So we spent a lot of time talking about measures of dispersion and a great, great deal of time talking about variance in standard deviation. And I'm sure at this point you're wondering, why do we care about these two things? Because they seem rather clunky and they're sensitive to measurement units and they don't have a nice little interpretation. Now, here is why. It turns out they do have a very, very nice feature that helps us understand a whole slew of distributions. If your data happens to be roughly bell-shaped, like what we see here with this bell-shaped curve, what's called a normal distribution, but there's a bunch of distributions that have this rough feature of being kind of bell-shaped. If your data looks like that, then the following also applies. That 68% of all of your observations, I don't care of what, all of your observations will lie plus or minus within like one standard deviation of the mean. And 95% of all of your observations will lie within two plus and minus two standard deviations from the mean, whatever your mean and standard deviation happens to be. In 99.7, almost all of your observations will lie within three standard deviations of the mean. So long as your distribution is roughly bell-shaped. Basically, if you know what a standard deviation is, like if your standard deviation happens to be 10, all right, well then three standard deviations is 30. And so plus 30, minus 30, we got a range of 60 points. Pretty much that's your range. All of your observations will lie within those 60 units. 99.7% of your observations. So pretty much everything. That's kind of your range. 95% of all of your observations will lie within those two standard deviations. So this is an incredibly powerful tool. It actually does have a very intuitive use. The number by itself, not so much. But you can use it, if you know what the mean is, to do some really cool things. And here's a great example. Let's say that somebody tells you that Americans, they go grocery shopping, and someone tells you that they spend, on average, $300 a month on grocery shopping. Now that in and of itself is, you know, okay, fairly interesting. But when you combine that with this statement right here, a standard deviation of 50, well, now we can get somewhere. All right, so if our mean here, our average value is $300 a month, then we can use the empirical rule to know what percent of Americans spend between 350 and 250. Because if we take 300 and we add one standard deviation, that brings us to 350, right? Because our standard deviation is 50. And we subtract 50 to bring us to 250. Then this range, 350 to 250, accounts for 68% of all of our observations. So just from me telling you this one, well, two pieces of information, this one sentence, you can immediately deduce that approximately 68% of Americans spend between 250 and 350 on groceries a month. That's pretty cool. But wait, there's more. Because the empirical rule tells us about two standard deviations and three standard deviations. All right, so if we take our 30 again, but this time we add one, two standard deviations, well, that brings us from 300 to 350 to 400. And if we subtract one, two standard deviations, that brings us from 300 to 250 to 200. And okay, now we can say that 95% of Americans spend between 200 and $400 on groceries a month. 
And we can also say that pretty much everybody, 99.7, so let's just round and call that everybody in the United States is going to spend between $450 and $150 on groceries. So this is incredibly powerful stuff. Just knowing the mean and the standard deviation told us what roughly two-thirds of Americans, what 95% of Americans and pretty much 100% of Americans spend on groceries. It gave us a very great description of the dispersion of grocery shopping in the United States, all from knowing what the average and the standard deviation is. So when you can do cool things like that, it's not a surprise that statisticians love these two statistics. All right. Thanks for watching.